The prize in this work is seeing that you're nothing as you are. Wow, I get all of that? Yeah, you get to see, basically, as you are, you're nothing. Well, what does that mean? That's not very nice. Well, no, this work isn't very nice to our pride and vanity. It kicks pride and vanity around pretty hard. And if you're really identified with yourself, with who you think you are in life, if you're really identified that, with that, this work is brutal. It will bruise you. It will break you. It will harm you. It will hurt you. It will make you feel bad. It will make you hate it. Sound familiar? Yeah, okay. So as we become less identified with who we are, with our feeling of ourself, with our achievements, with our accomplishments, with our beauty, with our virtues, with our wonderfulness, with our everything, you know, just our reputation, our, you know, all the wonderful things about us that we've cultivated and built up all these years, how well we dress, how beautiful our hair is. So when I say the prize in this work is you seeing that as you are, you're nothing, what I'm really saying is this, this work isn't about life and what it's made of you. Life made you. Life made you. What is sitting here is what life made. You're nothing. What, 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 your body, your body, you didn't have, you didn't have anything to do with your body. Okay, okay, maybe you made it a little fatter or a little skinnier. Maybe you, you know, you, you but, but we don't even know about that. That's not even a for sure. You know, you look at, you look at a whole family, a whole family of fat people or a whole family of skinny people. It's like, so the individual made themselves that way? No. You know, so, so we can't really say we made anything. Everything is a reaction. Everything is programmed in. So we're really machines. This is a terrifying realization. Because, because we have to realize, oh my God, I haven't done anything. I'm nothing. Right. Isn't that the beauty? That's the beauty of this work. You begin to realize the prize in this is you begin to realize I'm nothing. I'm nothing. This is, a, I'm an invented thing. All of this. I have nothing. I, I can, I can boast about nothing. Nothing. Because nothing is mine. Nothing is mine. My body is not mine. My looks are not mine. My teeth are not mine. My hair is not mine. My face is not mine. My clothes are not mine. Everything I acquired, everything I acquired somewhere else. What is really mine? We don't know that. What is really me? We don't know that. That's what this work tries to help us uncover and discover. The work can conduct to you, if you value this work, and if you will receive this work sincerely, genuinely, a new valuation of yourself with a new meaning of your life. And that's it. Woohoo! We get to find out we're nothing. But that's a good thing. Oh, thank God. I thought I was something. I thought I was somebody. I thought I was important. I thought that meant something. I thought people should treat me a certain way. When that burden is taken off of you, it's like, oh, wow. That's a whole different story now. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to make sure that people treat me right. I don't have to make sure that people do this or do that. I don't have to make sure about anything. I can just have the freedom of being nothing. You have to really get what this means because there's such a tremendous freedom in being nothing. If you are somebody in something, with that comes a lot of limitation. If you're the president of the United States, where can you go? If you're John Travolta, where can, can you go to the grocery store? Well, you can go, but you're going to be mobbed. You can I have your autograph. Or are you, aren't you, didn't you, you know, oh, I loved you in that movie. If you're the president, can you go to the grocery store? No. You got secret service men who go with you everywhere. That's freedom? No, that's not. But being nobody, you're free. Being nothing, you're even freer. This work isn't about life and what it's made you. It's about your further transformation. If you don't think you're the end of all things and the most excellent being on this planet, the most virtuous, the most excellent, that's it, what can I say? If you don't think you're it, the end of everything, then you've got a chance in this work. But if you still think you're it, if you still think that life is all about you, if you still think you're the center of the universe, you're in a bad way when it comes to this work. This work is not going to set well with you. Life can't be explained by life, and you can't be explained in terms of yourself. You can't be explained in terms of yourself. Well, what is so-and-so about? Well, so-and-so was born in blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Well, what's so-and-so about? Well, so-and-so went to school and blah, 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 and blah. None of that explains you, yourself. None of that explains the real you. It explains what you acquired, where you got your degree, where you work, who your mother and father was, what your lineage is. But, it, but, but who are you? 
Well, it doesn't explain that. So you cannot be explained. You yourself cannot be explained by your life. And life can't be explained by life. How do you think? Well, I think, uh, I think very well. No. How do you think? How do you think? How do you move? How do you digest food? How do you breathe? Well, I don't know. You can't explain it. You can't explain it. Well, I just, I don't know. I just like, I just like blink. How do you blink? Well, I don't know. I just like, I don't know. I just blink. I can't explain it. How do you beat your heart? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I do that. Right. We can't explain it. These are good things to think about. Not a lot of people think about this because they think it's stupid, but it's not stupid because it's conscious and conscious is not stupid. Mechanical, unconscious, that's stupid. Taking everything for granted, that's stupid. A toaster can do that. A toaster takes itself for granted. A tape player takes itself for granted. A DVD player takes itself for granted. But a conscious being never takes itself for granted. It's great to be alive. Did you know that? No. You know why you didn't know? Because you took it for granted. You took this morning for granted. You took today for granted. You took your breath for granted. You take your sight for granted. You take the fact that you can see one another, talk to one another, hear, taste, smell, feel. Take it all for granted. But it's great to be alive. Look at this. Wake up for just a minute, just a second, and look at this. Oh, my God. It's a miracle. I'm a miracle. You're a miracle. It's a miracle that we're here. How did we get here? How did we get so fortunate to have this work fall on our dull, thick, stupid ears? And some of it is getting through. How did we get so lucky? I don't know. I can't explain it, but I can be grateful for it. And if you can't be grateful, you're sleeping. You got to wake up a little bit to be grateful. Being grateful is not easy. Not in this life. People go through this life grumbling. That's, that's asleep. That's mechanical. There's nothing. Anybody can do that. You don't even need, you don't need anything. You barely need to be out of bed to do that. You barely need to be mobile to do that. People in wheelchairs can do that. People with tubes feeding them can do that. They can complain. They can be negative about things. Anybody can do that. It takes no effort to do that. Just suck in air, push it back out again. Then you can do that. But to be grateful, that takes something else. That takes some effort. That takes some awareness. All workforce starts from magnetic center, the possession of which is a sign of being. Well, what does that mean? If you don't have magnetic center, you don't have being? Yeah, that's pretty much what it means. If you don't have magnetic center, you're pretty much just a machine. And if you've got some magnetic center, there's a possibility for you of being something other than a machine. That's what that means. Well, that's kind of harsh. I didn't make the rules. I didn't make this up. This is not my system. This is not James Parkinson's system. This system is thousands and thousands of years old. This system has been around long before this civilization. This system was around long before Gurdjieff. He just brought it to this culture. He just brought it to this era. He just put it in a way where we could understand it because we couldn't understand it in the, in the many forms that it's been in before, in history, in times past. The truth of it is always the same, regardless of what language it's spoken in, regardless of what culture it's given in, regardless of what time it's given in. The truth is always the same. And, that, and make no mistake about it, this is about the truth. Not some moral truth, not some you know, cultural truth, but a real, genuine, absolute, sincere truth that is the same everywhere. Well, there is no such thing. Well, no, of course there's no such thing. Not today, not in our culture. There are no absolutes in our culture. Why is that? Because we're afraid of absolutes. We're afraid that absolutes are going to take away some of our freedom. And we cherish our freedom. That's why everybody wants to be president, so they can all be free to go to the grocery store. So they all can be free to go to the bathroom without the Secret Service going with them. You see how insane it is? It's just ridiculous. What we call freedom is prison. But what this work calls freedom is terrifying to the false personality. Because to the false personality, it means one thing and one thing only, death. And it's terrified of death because it knows it's nothing. We can't get workforce without feeling something apart from the visible world, apart from visible life. Look, if you look at the visible world and visible life as everything there is, you don't have to worry about this work because you're not going to have any feeling for it. 
But if you look at the visible world and visible life, and you say, there better be more than this, <laughs> there better be something else, you got a chance. That's your wake-up call. you got a chance. You've got some magnetic center. You've got some being. You've got some possibility. There's some hope for you. That's a good thing. If you're content with your food, if you're content with your income, your house, your kids, your immaculate virtue, your respectability, your career, your excellent disposition, you don't have any magnetic center. If, if, if you're satisfied with all that stuff, you don't have any magnetic center. You're not here. You're not, you're not listening to my voice. People, people like that don't even listen to the madness that I'm babbling. That's, this is insanity to them. A man asleep in life has no magnetic center. He'll be content being a doctor, president, general, scientist, astronaut, whatever. He'll be thrilled. He'll be, oh, wow, I got my PhD. He'll be thrilled that he got his PhD. He won't know anything that really matters. He won't know anything about anything. See, that's the thing. What does the president know? He doesn't know anything. Oh, but how could you say that? Easy. People don't know anything. Experts don't know anything. That's why the world is the way it is. Because the people running it are dead. They don't know anything. Not anything that really matters. Oh, they may know, you know, that you have to go to this, and they may know where the, the, the address of the United Nations, though I doubt that. I'm pretty sure their secretary might know. But I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't. That's why. Didn't we, didn't we recently find out that one of the presidents didn't know what uh, the, the things are in the grocery store? Where you scan your food across. And bleep, didn't know, they didn't know what that was. They'd never been to a grocery store. Well, they hadn't been to a grocery store since, since those things. Yeah, they didn't. They, how would they know? How would they? You think they go to grocery stores? You think these people go to grocery stores? You think these senators and these congressmen, you think those people are like you? Well, you're wrong. They're not like you. If they were like you, they'd be here. Can you imagine them here? No. Look at, look at, it's like, that's really ridiculous, isn't it? Can you imagine the president of the United States sitting still for any of this? Can you imagine him take, having to take a look at himself like you take a look at yourself? Forget it. It's not going to happen. Why? They, they don't need to. They don't tolerate it. They're satisfied with life as it is. Why? It's giving them all that they want. Why? Because they don't want anything. They don't want anything that really matters. All they want is what's visible. If you're one of them, you're not here. That's why I say that. I don't mean to be ragging on the president, the prime minister, you know, and pick the king, anybody, anywhere. It's all the same. It's not just about the president. It's about everybody, everywhere in power. What does that mean? If you want power, you are not connected to what this work is about. This work is not about power in an outer way. This work is about force in an inner way. It's a huge difference. Last week, we talked about the different kinds of force. This week, we're going to carry on talking about different kinds of force. So a man content being a doctor, president, whatever, his force will be derived from life and the success that he has in life. So if he wins the election, he's happy. If he doesn't win the election, he runs for something else until he does win. Why? Because that is what makes him happy. That is what makes him content, because that is what he wants. Because the visible world and visible life is all that's important to him. He doesn't know about this other world that we're talking about. How did you get to know about that? I don't know, but you ought to get on your face and thank the gods, or whomever, that you do, because you are very fortunate. I do. I do. There are days I wake up and I go, oh, thank you, whoever you are. Thank you. Today's one of those days for me. Oh, yesterday was a horrible day. And I was so grateful for it. I was so grateful for it because I was alive. I was alive to, to suffer. The horror of the day of not getting my way, of everything going wrong. I was alive and I could taste all of it. Oh, this hurts. Oh, it hurts so good. Oh, I hate this. But it was great because I was alive. And at the end of it, I was so tired. I just wanted to crawl into bed. Ugh. And when I woke up this morning, it was like, oh, no, another day. <laughs> another day. I've got more of this to do. And then I thought, wait a second. This is great. Another day. Another day. I'm alive. I woke up. Now the trick is to stay awake. That's the trick. But that's why we're here, so that we can help each other to stay awake, to wake up and stay awake, to gain this force that helps to keep us awake, to, to learn how to create it, to learn how to generate it, to learn how to build it up in ourselves so that we can have it to use to stay awake, so that we don't go back to sleep and become presidents and generals and scientists and astronauts and teachers.
and The Walking Dead. People who think that that's all that matters. I'm going to be excommunicated for this. I just know it. <laughs> well, you can think about it. I mean, this is really not ha this is not what makes people happy. This kind of talk is not what makes people in the world happy. They don't like this. I don't really care what they like. I don't want what they have. And they don't want what I have. Like, wow, what a surprise. It's no big surprise. I don't want what you have. You don't want what I have. See ya. I'm okay with that. Finally. So these people, they're satisfied with their feeling of themselves from their life achievement. Who am I? I'm the president of the United States. Yeah, but who are you? Well, I'm the president. Well, who, what are you, who are you going to be after you? I'm going to be the past president. <laughs> it's like, oh, great. That's great. But who are you? You know, it's like, I'm not, I don't want to go there. I don't want to live there. That's not what I want out of this life. Why? Because I know there's something more. That's why. Because I know something they don't know. There's something more. Well, you're just saying that because you can't be president. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's right. That's what I'm doing. Run along. Go back out to your sandbox. Run along. This isn't for you. The grown-ups are talking here. Go back out and play. It's only an exceptional person that can admit, whatever his position, his reputation, that he knows nothing and feels himself to be nothing. Think about it. Think about how exceptional it is for you to be able to admit that, for you to be able to realize your nothingness. Small cups, little tiny sake cups, are soon filled. <laughs> and that's life. You look around out there, they're just little sake cups running around. And it's very easy to fill them. It doesn't take much to make them happy. It doesn't take much and they're contented. But the bigger cups, they want more, something beyond the visible, beyond the physical world. Those are bigger cups. It takes more to fill those. A lot more difficult, which is why we're still here after 20 some years. Big cups take a lot of filling. No one can make workforce if he's completely identified, if he's satisfied with himself as he is. Such a person is going to only going to get the force from life. And the force from life is a force that's interested in your own achievements, whatever life has made you. You're going to be content with that. You can only make workforce by not identifying with yourself, realizing that you haven't done all you've done in life. Well, that's a stupid thing to say. What do you say? What do you mean? I haven't done all that I've done in life. Well, that's what I mean. Everything that you ascribe to yourself, everything that you say you've done in life, you haven't really done. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, of course I do. You're the one who doesn't know what I'm talking about. See, if you can't understand what I'm saying, don't blame me. You're the one that lacks the understanding. I understand what I'm talking about. And there are people who do understand what I'm talking about perfectly. If you're not one of them, look to yourself. Don't look to me. That's the problem. Well, that's unheard of. That's right. That's right. That's unheard of. People in that state, it's unheard of to them to look to themselves because they're satisfied with themselves. They're content with themselves. They're the end of everything. They already know it all. They're small cups, full. And I don't mean to be bagging on those people, although I am bagging on them. It's not, it's just, what are you going to do? How could you not? We are those people. We're talking about ourselves. I'm not talking about the president. I'm not talking about the senators. I'm not talking about congressmen. I'm not talking about kings and prime ministers. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about us. It's us. It's us. That's how that's who we are. And that's what we're trying to not identify with. That's what we're trying to pull away from, to separate from, so that we can see that there is something else with which we may identify if we are willing to make the effort, if we're willing to learn how to do it. The reason I say you haven't done all you've done in life is because it's been done to you by circumstances, outside forces, outside necessities. How you were raised, where you were raised, when you were raised, by whom you were raised, where you went to school. Why did you go to school there? Like you had a choice? You had no choice. You had no choice. Well, why didn't you pick your, why didn't you pick better parents? That's what I'd like to know. Why didn't you pick a better, why didn't you pick better DNA? You had some choice. Hmm? Why don't you pick a better last name? You really messed up there. You see, see what I mean? It's like, we, we didn't do any of this. But, 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 but what are you saying? We're not responsible? That's right. I'm saying we're not responsible. We're accountable, but we're not responsible. Well, what does that mean? It means life isn't fair. What? Life isn't fair? I always suspected that. <laughs> you know, now this guy is talking because I always suspected that. Now I can hear. Now I understand what he's saying. Life isn't fair. That's right. It's treated me badly. Oh, let's get negative. No, let's not and say you did. Let's not go with those eyes, those little eyes that like to get negative. 
Let's just let them run down the road by themselves. Look at pride, vanity, meritoriousness, self-satisfaction, virtuousness, respectability, all of that stuff that life has built up in you. Do you gain a feeling of self from that, or, you do, or, you, or do you dislike it? Well, which is it? You like it. You like it? So you do gain a sense of self from it. But do you also dislike it? Yes. See, so there you go. Now the split is occurred. Yes, I like it, but I don't like it. Well, I, I don't know whether to like it or not. Which should, I, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't like it. When don't you like it? When I'm awake. Right. When do you like it? When I'm sound asleep. And there you go. And that's the whole thing right there. We love it when we're asleep. Oh, yeah, tell me more. Tell me how wonderful I am. Oh, I like that. That's good. Yes, a little more right there, please. Oh, yeah, that right there. But when we're awake, it's like, get that away from me. Yeah. I don't want any part of that. No, 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 don't, 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 come, don't come around here with that. As long as life is your neutralizing force, the force that makes you go, do everything, it keeps personality active and essence passive. This way lies in life, and the secret of it is not to identify with what you were or are in life. This way, the fourth way lies in life. You don't have to go to a monastery. You don't have to go to climb a mountain and be in a cave. You don't have to go to the bottom of the sea. You don't have to go to some special place. This work is in life. It's right where you are. Well, you don't have to change jobs? No, you don't have to change jobs. Well, I don't have to change apartments? No, you don't have to change apartments. Well, I don't have to get a different address? No, you don't have to get a different address. It's all inside and it's right here where you are in life. In other words, running away isn't going to make anything better. What? It always worked before. No, it didn't. It didn't always work before. You just thought it did. But the problem, the problems ended up eventually following you. Why? Because you took them with you. Well, that's right. If I'd only divorced that person, then it would be, no, 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 no. You took them with you inside of you. There's a concept. Personality is like the meat in an egg. And essence is like the germ spot that can grow at the sacrifice of the meat of the egg. You know, the little egg, you know, you take an egg and you crack an egg open, there's a little germ spot in there. That little germ spot is what's going to grow into a chicken or whatever eggs grow into. You know, some eggs don't, you know, not all eggs grow into chickens. Some grow into turtles and some grow into geese and some grow into robins and, you know, all kinds of different things lay eggs. Lizards lay eggs. And, you know, it's so reptiles. So reptiles and birds have a lot in common. Look at their feet. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I look at these birds, and I look at you, you little reptilian bird. Yeah, and, uh, they are kind of reptilian in some way. New birth is possible, but it requires a special atmosphere, a work atmosphere, in which we can begin to laugh at ourselves. It's so beautiful to be able to laugh of our laugh at ourselves, isn't it? Great, isn't it great to just be able to laugh at yourself sometimes, like not take yourself so seriously, and be so identified with yourself and your respectability and your reputation and and your virtues and your again your great looks and your wonderful disposition, not to be so identified with all that that you can just laugh at it. Like that's gonna be so refreshing. Doesn't happen very often, but it does happen from time to time if you hang around in the work atmosphere. And that's a great thing. I love that about the work. I love laughing at myself when. When I'm not identified with myself. When I'm identified with self, myself, I love killing people who laugh at me. <laughs> I, lo I love scratching their eyes out. I love beating them with clubs, anything. You know, stop them, make them stop. Does it sound familiar? Yes, it must sound familiar because you're all kind of doing the nodding the head and laughing thing. Yeah. If we were more, in essence, everything would become more real, more genuine, more simple, more true. It would be good. But when we're trying to feel bigger, stronger, and more powerful, more important, we're moving in the perverse direction of the work, and we will gain no workforce that way. It is only by sacrificing ourselves, our sense of power, our sense of dignity, our sense of respectability, our sense of wonderfulness, our sense of virtue, our sense of meritoriousness, our sense of what's owed us. Only by sacrificing that can we gain workforce. What does that mean? No workforce, no wakey. No wakey, sleepy. Sleepy, machiney. That's it. It's the whole thing in a nutshell. It should be so easy to live out. Workforce comes through non-identifying, self-observation, dissolving the pictures, the ideas, the proud imagination about ourselves. I don't want to do that. Then you don't want any workforce and you don't want to wake up. I don't want to wake up. I don't blame you. Waking up is hard to do. You know that waking up is... Well, I should probably not quit my day job. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> well, this is my day job. This is it. This is what I do. Workforce comes through non-identifying. Well, that's easy to say. Those states... The pictures, the ideas, the proud imagination about ourselves, all those states prevent higher emotional and higher mental centers 
from transmitting their force to us. If we want the kind of force we need to stay awake, workforce, we need to get it from higher centers, higher emotional, higher mental centers. Well, the problem is, is that these other states that we live in, pride, vanity, our wonderfulness, our excellence, you know, getting bigger, smarter, more powerful, having our way, all of that stuff blocks, totally blacks out anything from higher emotional and higher mental centers. So no force can make it through the blackout. Because it's a blackout. That's exactly what it is. There's something in us, higher centers, that's always trying to change us, but it can't reach us because false personality is blacking everything out. It doesn't like it. It doesn't like the light coming in. It paints the windows black. It boards them up. It stops the light every time it gets a chance. What does this mean? Let's look at this in practical terms. Somebody tells you what's wrong with you. What do you do? You kill them. How do you kill them? In any way that you can. Well, you're not allowed to kill them physically because you go to jail. So how do you kill them? Internally, mentally and emotionally. You discredit them. You devalue them. You black them out. You stop the light from coming in. That's not true. Only what I think about me is true. Well, that's like having the fox guard the chickens, isn't it? <laughs> if you can observe a thing, you're no longer that thing. It's the first step in the separation that this work teaches. If you're identified with yourself as you are, taking your thoughts as real, then you are prey to your bad moods, to your bad self-feelings, and you'll get nowhere in this work. Yourself is psychological, psychic, spiritual, not physical. It belongs to that of which you are conscious. Well, what are you not, con what, what is it of which you are not conscious? Whatever you're taking for granted. Well, what's that? Everything. Now find what isn't. Everything is false personality. Now find what isn't. Are you going to put your consciousness into an evil thought or mood? Well, yes, if you're unconscious, <laughs> you'll put all your force into an evil thought and an evil mood. You'll never give it a thought. You'll just be in it down the road and you may wake up a week later or a month later or a year later or never. There are some people who go to sleep and never wake up. Self-satisfaction, self-glorification, feeling that you're always right and you always know best. If you put your consciousness into that, you're going to die. You're going to do the big sleep. You're going to sleep unto death. Unless you observe yourself, you can't notice where you place your consciousness. People just don't know where they place their consciousness. You go, see, go, go walk up to somebody out on the street. Go to the, the guy who comes and delivers the mail and say, where do you place your consciousness? Here's your mail, idiot. And that guy over there at 1144 is a real kook, isn't he? Yeah. He goes back and tells everybody at the mail box place, you know, what are they called? The post office. <laughs> Maurice Nicole said, I don't put my feeling of I into hate, into hopelessness. I don't consent to them. I don't go with them. That's good advice. Mm -hmm. Take it. Do that. Don't put your feeling of I into hate. Don't put your feeling of I in anything like that. Don't consent with it. Don't go with it. A man must develop spiritually. In this work, there is no spiritually. In this work, we say psychologically. Why? Because, because religion has ruined the word spiritual. It's ruined it. Now, you, you hear religious people say, well, we're not, we're not religious, we're spiritual. What does that mean? It means we're religious. <laughs> but, but we're not religious like them. That's what it means. We're talking about a different thing. Everybody's spiritual because everybody's psychological. Everybody's got it. Whether you are aware of it or not. This is based on truth, sincerity. All negative states make you lie. This is, I, I thought this was incredibly profound. All negative states make you lie. Think about that for, for a couple of nanoseconds, if you can. All negative states make you lie. I always wondered what made me lie. It's negative states that make me lie. No wonder we lie all the time. We're always in negative states. You're lying by tasting negative emotions. You've got to see this. You've got to see this for yourself. It won't help to have me tell you this. This work is to build up truth in us. Not the moral truth, but real truth through inner sincerity. It's why this work starts with uncritical, sincere self-observation. Well, why? <laughs> because that's how you start to find out the truth about yourself. And once you have some truth about yourself, this work can reach you. Higher centers then can reach you. There's something for them to touch. But there's nothing to touch until you know something true about yourself. And all, if all you know about yourself is your degree, your address, your name, your parents, blah, 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 blah. If that's all you know about yourself, and all the rest is just pictures and images of how wonderful you are, you know nothing about yourself. And if you know nothing about yourself, then where's the work going to fall? There's no self for it to fall on. 
It's all false. It's all invented. It's all acquired. It's all a lie. So this uncritical, sincere self-observation builds in us a transmitter, an instrument that can transmit to us influences of higher centers that can only reach us when there's truth in us. This makes sense, doesn't it? There's no truth in you. It's like a crystal receiver, the old crystal radios. If it didn't have a crystal in it, it didn't receive. All the air, all the broad, the radio broadcasts were buzzing around. They're just zipping through the air. TV broadcasters zipping through the air right now. There's all kinds of cell phones or z z broadcasters zipping through the conversations or zipping through your body right now. <laughs> but you don't have a receiver, so you're not hearing them, thank God. So this work builds in us this, tr this receiver so that we can start to receive the influences from higher mental and higher emotional centers so that we can start to be nourished by them, so that we can start to be fed by them, so that something real in us can grow, apart from this thing that life has built, this nothing that life will take to the grave and churn up and feed to the worms. Don't ascribe to yourself excellence in any form. It makes it impossible for higher centers to come through to us. Don't ascribe to yourself excellence in any form. If only you could burn this into your brain. And remember this, don't ascribe to yourself excellence in any form. It's a trap. It's a death trap. You'll get no workforce unless you work against personality and not identify with the kind of person you take yourself for granted as being. You are not what you think you are. Now, that's the good news and the bad news. You are not what you think you are. And when you think you are what you think you are, that's bad news. But when you know that you are not what you think you are. That's great news, because it means you've got a little distance and separation from what you think you are. You're not identified with it so much. And you've got hope, and you're starting to get influences from higher centers that are feeding you, nourishing you, and opening up the windows, and taking off the black paper and the boards that are on the windows, and letting some light in. And that's what this work is about.